In this video, I'll give you a quick overview of our different SAP steps or the methods you can use to extract SAP data. Let's start very classically with the SAP ERP table input. Here, I can read out persisted tables from the SAP system in a very classic way. I have a connection set up here to an SAP. I need read access to it, of course. I am here, a, move, uh, a search function or a table field where I can select tables. If I don't know which tables I want to read, then I can use a star here and search through. I can preview the readable tables here, which are then displayed to me. In my case, I very precise which table I want. Then the uh, respective columns are displayed here. BD, object, language, etc. In the advanced tab, I can adjust the batch size, the row limit size, and skip rows. I can also start working with filters here, so I don't have to extract all the data from SAP. Data with specific filter conditions. If I have a lot, a lot of data, or if the table becomes very, very large, I want to read out. Then I can also activate the server mode here. This gives me a significant performance. Now I can simply deactivate or activate by setting the check mark here. So let's do this while we're at it. We can also take a preview here. From the first 100 records, and here I then get the data directly from SAP. But it can also read data from the RFC executor. That's a different form. Here, I'm not going directly to the table. Instead, I go to an RFC component, which then extracts the data for me. The step is built similarly. I have my, again, SAP connection, and instead of the table name, I previously entered, I now need to enter the function. Here again, if I don't know the function, I can enter an asterisk here and then use the, the loot function to find the respective Fabio or the RFC component, which I am authorized for, will then all be displayed to me here. In my example, however, I remain here. In our customer get detail, I also have the option to enter import parameters. For instance, in my case right now, business partners or employees, and then I can also set my return parameters. Let's take a look at a preview again. Be yes, but now appropriate return from the HFC block. Let's continue with the SAP B2B DSO input. Now I can also access a BSO object in SAP. Steps are all built similarly. That means I have the connection here again. Bong. Instead of the table or the EFC component, I need to call the relevant info provider in this case. Year two, I have a search function again. Large in front of providers. I also have the option to select the server mode again to increase performance. Uh, otherwise, I can get the data displayed again through a preview. But, but now a brief moment because, because there's a very large amount of data. For a preview, I'm showing our different data here. Um, another SAP object is the SAP P extractor. Here, it's now possible for me to extract ODP elements from SAP. Another yes right. connection. I need to go now. Name the ODP provider, so speak out the name, the concept, and the semantics. And then my data comes back here again. I'm also giving a quick preview here again. In the background, uh, the corresponding data provider is called and the data are extracted.
the next SAP data object is the SAP query input. Here I can now extract data directly from an SAP query. For this, I need to specify the workspace, the group, the info set, and of course the corresponding query. And then get the data directly from my SAP query and can display it here and process it further with Pentaho data integration. The whole thing also works with rspeports.com. Now I can choose a specific report from which I want to extract data. And the data will then be extracted from the respective SAP report for me. Now, it might happen that I want to join data from different SAP tables together. Do I have two options? I can do this on the Pentaho data integration site, read both tables, and perform the join in Pentaho as mentioned. Or, or I have the option here to perform this able join on the SAP site. First, I need to select two SAP tables and must specify the joint condition. On the left side, we have an SAP table, which we want to inner join with another one. SAP table. I can set certain filter conditions here, still have various setting options, um, and can manage like two SAP tables here, simply via SAP directly join together. Yes, that was a quick overview of our various SAP steps, our different options, how we can extract SHP objects easily and quickly.